Grand Baptist, if I could just get you in on, the, on, on, on that note, there seems to be a certain, why are the stock markets continuing to rise at a time when everywhere else is talk about, you know, gloom and doom. It's a liquidity, it's a liquidity, it's almost like a liquidity shock. There's so much liquidity which is flooding into the system that, that financial asset prices are just as high, irrespective of everything else. What is your sense of that? And should people worry, is there a crash coming? Uh, or, or do you think liquidity will remain that way until such time as in the economy will be strong enough to, to sustain it? Take a look at the markets. It's frankly very tough at this point in time to know what the markets are factoring in, uh, especially if you look at different markets around the world, because there is just so much uncertainty ahead. Now, in general, uh, I would say that markets tend to be quite efficient and do tend to anticipate the most likely outcome of the economy and earnings. But as you uh, obviously know, we are one of the world's largest asset managers at PGM, uh, the asset management company of Prudential Financial. And what we try to do at PGM is to evaluate whether at any point in time the markets are overly exuberant or too pessimistic. And we then try to position our portfolios accordingly. And as we sit here at the beginning of July, we frankly think that the markets are probably a bit more on the exuberant side. Uh, and, and why do I say that? First, let's just take a look at the economic outlook. At PGM, we generally agree with the recent report from the IMF that the global economy will be in a recession for most of this year, with U.S. growth down about 6% on average for 2020 and global growth down about 5% or so. And we also agree with the IMF that both the US and global growth will probably recover to about that five or 6% pace in 2021. We think it will take time for the virus to be contained and importantly for economic behavior and activity to adjust and get back on track. So in other words, we are not expecting a sharp V-shaped recovery, but rather frankly, it's more like a Nike swoosh recovery, you know, a sharp decline with a slower, longer recovery that will probably take to late 21 or maybe even early 22 before we get back to levels before the crisis. So now let's take a look at the markets, right? Uh, if you look at the S&P 500, as you said, even though it dropped sharply by about 30% in March, it has rebounded since then and is now down only about three or 4% year to date. Now, I think we all note the huge amount of government and central bank liquidity that has gone into the system. It's, it's unfathomable in terms of those amounts in trillions of dollars. And so some of that rebound was probably warranted because of that stimulus. However, some of this, uh, like the unemployment benefits, uh, the paycheck loan programs in the US are short term in nature. They're not sustainable. And frankly, unfortunately, some of it has gotten wasted. And right. so when we look at the rebound at the S&P 500 and the fact that the forward PE now is 24 times compared to a historical median of about 16 or 17, we do think that the market has probably recovered a bit too fast and we wouldn't be surprised to see a correction in the near term before it eventually recovers again and catches up again back to the economic recovery that's likely to happen. So, so that's our take about the US uh, market. Now, if we look at India, uh, the markets in India are still down about 15% year to date. And so maybe that's being a bit more realistic, but maybe on the other hand, it is a reflection of the fact that corporates might have an even tougher time recovering in India and that the Indian government and RBI might have a bit less flexibility in, let's say, the US government or the European governments. And so um, maybe it's, you know, being reflective of that, uh, that fact. And then the final point I would make, which is something that we tend to forget, is that the market is made up of many different companies. And in the US and even in India, it seems to us as we look at their performance, that market leaders are actually gaining dominance. And there are huge disparities in performance yeah. Uh, depending on the company. So we really need to focus on bottom-up research and picking those companies that are likely to win than to get caught up in the market averages. Obviously, you must be looking at different sectors, different areas. Where is the pain, the maximum? Where is the pain, the not? And to some extent, by the way, the markets also do reflect it. I, I was just saying a few minutes back that digital, the digital economy, digital businesses globally and in India 
they're all doing really well. If anything, it's the, the, the pandemic and lockdown has been a shot in the arm for them. Their traffic is up. Their business models are looking better than ever. So digital is great. Agriculture, as it turns out, seems to be doing quite well. In India, we've been seeing bumper harvests and again, the monsoon seems to be Seems to be pretty good right now. As one of the world's largest asset managers, uh, you know, PGM has the opportunity of interacting with a whole host of companies, both public and private, across a whole host of asset classes. And so I do think we are in somewhat of a unique position to uh, uh, understand or at least try to understand what uh, some of these companies are going through and what the thought process is are going through as they are looking to amend and adapt uh, into the new environment. In fact, we've just published a white paper called After the Great Lockdown, which will be available to our, all our clients, which highlights some of the changes we anticipate. Um, and I'd just like to touch on a couple of these. So the first, as you said, Vikram, is, uh, is clearly technology. Um, we, we really do think that technology adoption will simply accelerate across every industry. The second area that, uh, that we seem to uh, uh, notice is the rethinking of global supply chains and approaches to inventory management. Uh, US and European companies were clearly surprised when their suppliers in China, Italy, and other countries suddenly went into lockdown mode and disrupted their supply chains and created the supply shock that, we are, that we've been talking about. So now companies are going to start thinking about diversifying their supply chains, possibly reshoring vendors. And then the final area that we think uh, will be a focus is a rethinking of real estate space, both in office, logistics, and residential properties, as well as in infrastructure and transportation needs. 